Anime enthusiasts and welcome to Scale Affairs, the show where I take a closer look on anime figures of all sorts. So sit back and relax while I'll tell you what's maybe worth adding to your collection. Today's figure is the first noodle stopper figure on the show, Miku in her villain version by Furyu. She comes to you in a windowless cardboard box that has approximately the same size as a Nando package. The box art is fitting for the character with a nice figure photo in front and the original illustration by Lo Alo on the side of it. And also, for some reason, they used an outdated spelling of the word villain front and center. I mean, what's next? An old Dao instead of the modern Yu? Inside the box, you will be greeted with more cardboard since this is a pretty small and cheap price toy, they did not go the extra mile by including a plastic blister and honestly I'm glad they didn't. In this price segment I see those figures more like a quick souvenir from an event rather than a collectible and it always annoys me when I can't fold away the boxes because of the blister. Since this is a figure that is supposed to sit on the edge of your cup ramen to press down the lid while steaming noodles, hence the name noodle stopper, you don't have to assemble anything but you have to possess a corner of some sort in order to place her. This might limit the possibilities to place this line of figures, but on the other hand it's nice to have a small toy sitting somewhere on your desk, perhaps in your gaming PC or like a webcam on your screen. Of course you can also sit her on the edge of a shelf, but I'd be afraid to accidentally swipe her down. I would appreciate if the manufacturer did include a small plastic cube as an alternative base. This way you would be able to place them in your showcase like every other figure. Quality wise this is surprisingly detailed for such a small mold. I don't know if it's a license thing or because she is super popular, but for some reason Miku Price figures always reign supreme above all other characters. Of course the sculpt is not flawless. For instance, if she sits on a flat surface, neither her right nor her left hand touches the ground and there are a few scuffs on her hair strains, presumably a damage when the figure rattled around in the cardboard box. But then they included a fair number of details like the bronze coated stinger at the end of her tail and all those fabric holes in the skirt. Also I think that the horns and the tail have a really interesting shape to them. The paint job is also much better than expected, I did not find many faulty strokes and I really like this purple to teal gradient on her sleeves. The color palette of all her clothes goes really well with the hairstyle, making this perhaps a great ingredient for your Halloween decoration. Miku's expression is also done fine, especially for its size with detailed printed eyes and a nice sinister looking grin. Normally I'm more a fan of the expression in the artwork where the figure is based on, but in this instance I actually like the look of the figure more than the illustration, at least if it comes down to her face because why they didn't include the purple glow of the tail and the horns from the artwork into the final figure is beyond me. All in all I can see why this figure line got so popular lately, they are really cute companions that can be placed in many different scenarios where a normal figure would be impractical. In a world where even priced figures are getting bigger and more expensive, they are also still very much affordable, making them an excellent souvenir or a small gift for your friends. Still I wish that they also came with some sort of simple base if you don't have a designated space or cup noodles at hand. Next time another League Champion as an android, so be sure you don't miss the next episode of Scaled Affairs when I once again take a closer look on anime figures of all sorts. Hopefully I can see you again in the future, until then take care and keep collecting.